Here's a wild tour story. Me and Hopper in Paris, man. I was with my man Hopper, DJ Hopper. We was in uh, Paris. And um, we were on our international tour with Funk Volume. And we had, uh, this was early stages. Like I said, like a lot of people didn't know Dizzy Wright. Definitely didn't know I smoked weed or anything. So it was always a mission. Every day, the mission was to find bud. You dig what I'm saying? Get the bud so we could do the show. That was it, like me and Hopper. We got to Paris, it was a little difficult. They didn't speak English. Um, they didn't understand us. They didn't want to talk to us. It, it was like, it all changed. Um, but we just like, we can't we can't let the street go to waste. You know what I'm saying? So me and, me and Hopper hit the streets of Paris. And uh, yeah, we walked around, we was asking people. Uh, some, some dude ended up telling us to go by the police station. <laughs> he said to me, man, was by the police station. I was like, oh, okay. We still went over there. <laughs> we still went by the police station. Yo, and then um, Hopper seen two, two dudes across the street, and we went over there. We like, yo, do y'all know where we could get the, you know, the, the marijuana, the green? Uh, they're like, the green, they got it. Right back here. We got an army. And Hopper like, what? Let's get it. We in Paris. Let's go get the weed. So we walked around the corner, man. Um, it was sketchy, bro. <laughs> it, was, it was sketchy. Like, they took us down into, like, like we had to, like, walk through this tunnel. And then, like, it was like a tunnel of, like, storage units type shit. Like, it was. And I'm like, is it worth it? <laughs> I'm just like, like, is this worth it? Yo, so we went down there. And, like, we, we walking past all these storage units. We hit another corner. It's like this long hallway. I'm like, damn. We walking all the way down this hallway. I'm like, man, we could get kidnapped and become slaves trying to find the bud. It don't matter though, cause we need it, right? So we, <laughs> I'm like, I got you, Hopper, you got me. That's what it is. We went, he opened up like this little uh, garage type thing. It had a box, like a toolbox, and he opened it up full of weed. Oh man, my heart dropped, bruh. I was like, we found the weed man in Paris. It was the it was the best feeling ever. I mean, especially after being kind of nervous that I was gonna become a slave in Paris. It really was the best feeling. So my man, mind you, we didn't know if they was gonna really have it, but they had so much that we wanted, we wanted a lot of it. So we were like, so I sent Hopper on a mission to get the money. I was like, I'm gonna stay with these niggas. You go get the money. Hopper like, all right, for sure. So Hopper go. I've been getting my, I've been taking a little time though. I'm like, I've been taking a long time. Got me kicking it with these niggas. Like I'm, I'm asking these niggas questions. We learning about each other. These niggas barely speak English though. So they just laughing at me. I just think that I'm the funny American at this point. I'm like, damn, where I at, man? So one of the dudes had a little motorcycle. He was like, you know, jump on. We could go look for him. So I'm like, all right, man, I'm in Paris, man. I, I, I jump on the motorcycle with the nigga. No homo ass the nuts, man. It was it was it it wasn't right. But look, I had to find Hopper because I needed the money, right? I'm just trying to get this process over with. So I jump on the nigga motorcycle. I'm in Paris, nigga. <laughs> I'm in Paris, nigga, riding on a motorcycle with this random weed man. We hit the corner. We hit the corner again. I see this nigga Hopper running down the street, right? I like Hopper. Hopper look over, and see me on the motorcycle and pass out. He was dying laughing. I was dying laughing. It was like the best weed moment ever. Like, you know what I'm saying? I rode the motorcycle up to Hopper, like nigga hopped off. We gave him the money, took the weed, went back to the hotel, smoked by the window for the rest of the night. It was beautiful. It was my best tour story ever, bro. The fact that we met the dude regardless was like, crazy to me because they didn't really speak English, bro. So it was difficult out there, but it was like, I mean, all of that was different for me, bro, because I couldn't read any of the food. I couldn't understand what they were saying. Like it was my first time that I walked into a McDonald's and they didn't understand chicken nuggets. She like pointing at the damn, I'm like, McDonald's, damn. So I don't know how they say chicken nuggets in, um, I don't know how they say it in French, but I know it's different. But I just remember that time when when everybody was just hungry and grinding and, and just had 
just put it on the line to chase this music. So this shit wasn't easy, that's for sure. Young potential out there trying to do whatever you want to do. Once you find who you are, like stay true to it. And that's just so cliche, but it's so real. You know what I'm saying? Because <clears throat> the people who get into the game from the first day they you seen them step in the game, and that has been whatever, like that's been true to whatever that is that you first seen throughout yeah. the whole time, you just latch to that more. It's fucked up because Hop, he don't smoke at all. He don't drink, he don't do anything like that. He doesn't. He, you know, shouldn't be having these kind of problems in Iceland with the police, you know? And they shut down the spot and they bring in this little fucking dog, man. They run the dog up and around and all that shit. And uh, we're all sitting there sweating bullets. So the 151 is hitting our asshole and other girls just like licking the shit. And next thing you know, the girl just starts screaming like, ah, ah, ah. I guess the shit was burning. 